What is that sound you ask? Welcome to the Rec Show Podcast, a show dedicated to beat makers around the world. Kick back, relax with the host, Golden Mind. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the man of the evening. That's what you hope to leave behind. Time. Yeah, but not even to leave it behind. I want you to know it now. Just like you talk about school, I'm tired as rough as tough. Hang in there. The bottom line is, this too shall pass. Nothing stays the same. This too shall pass. Nothing stays the same. Nothing stays the same. Time. I mean, hey, you know, I'm trying to give everybody their food. Didn't have uh, much weight, uh, muscle, and so he started lifting weights and all that kind of stuff so he could build up his muscles. But didn't. Even as a child, uh, I kind of gravitated to weapons almost as if something inside me told me will become proficient in at least protecting your person well than Check, check, check. One, two. Peace and love, everybody. What's going on? I go by the name of David Goldemine Hicks. And this is episode number 69 of the Rec Show podcast, man. I hope everybody's counting their blessings and not their problems, man. I hope everybody's having a good uh, or had a good work week um, and is having an amazing weekend, man. Last week, yo, we had the guy, um, Town Bay. Uh, Tom Bay, he's from uh, Houston, but currently resided in Austin, man. So I need y'all to go ahead and check that out. Uh, episode number 68. But this week, man, we going from Texas to Virginia. All right. We going and meeting up with uh, a Psych Ward Records. I, I want to say like creator, 
or you might be an affiliate um but he's it's, also yeah. yeah he's a producer you know what i mean he's a like artist he's a skater like you can't box this guy in man so yo man when i um first discovered his music a few years ago man i was like yo this guy's on another planet so I, I was like yo let me just ask him if he wants to be on the show he graciously said yes so that's where we going today man i want y'all to give it up for the one and only doofus man doofus what's going on my guy peace, 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 man not much man i'm just waking up you know just trying to get my day started my dog in here staring at me because he won't go outside <laughs> but i literally woke up like 12 minutes late so yeah we here man let me in church it's all love man yo so yo thank you for doing the show man um before we even kick any of the questions off man i just have to ask this um you know first of all give the people who may not know you for the b-heads you know on the internet that might not know you go ahead introduce yourself you know what your name means um how your name was created and also like uh any collectives or labels that you might be a part of okay um yeah my, my name is doof um my real name is justice you know but my mom gave me both my rap name and my, my music name i don't know i it's just like doof is kind of just like i was looking for a name and i ain't really know what it was gonna be and then i think i like made a beat or something on garage band and it was like i, I called it doof because it was like food backwards I'm like a big ass Doom fan and shit. And mm. then also like my mom just used to, like I was like a goofy ass kid. So like I would do something to like make my mom laugh and she would call me a doofus. So that kind of just like stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? That's just kind of like, you know, that's part of like in how I try to go about this whole music shit. Just try to like find a, a less abrasive way to go about the shit. I just like have fun, try to try to maneuver around the shit. Um, yeah, I'm down with uh, Psych Ward. I didn't create Psych Ward. That's like, that's my family though. Like that's like group of my homies that I met through my brother Sadu Gold up here. And then when we met, it turned out they was both from like the same part of Virginia I'm from. So that was like, pretty like you know that show that's like the fan for forever basically um i got my own collective base base cannibals base boys university whichever you want to call that that's like just that's just my fam you know what i'm saying like this me sc the chemist fucking notice uh king kaiju like just you know just like just homies we all kind of like for the most part like skate and make art and make music you know we don't we, ha we don't have like no uh like collective project or nothing now but that's just that's just like my personal like fam away from fam type shit mm -hmm. and then um yeah man i mean for the most part as far as like association go i, I usually be around by myself but, uh, <laughs> real team of me vibe over here <laughs> team of me man i got you yo yo like how, how long you been making beats man uh probably like 20 2000 like nine maybe 2000 i want to say like 2009 i heard myself skating and then fucking like I had like this, uh, yeah, 2009, I heard myself skating and I had like a little before that, like had, we had this like social studies teacher who like, you know, like I, if you my age or whatever, like it's likely you had a school where they would like, they had a selection of like, I mean, now they got iPads and shit, but back then we had the shitty MacBooks and shit. <laughs> And uh, we had a teacher that would basically like, it was like a history class. It was like Black History Month or some shit. And basically she showed us how to use GarageBand so that we could make alternate versions of these like Black Renaissance poems. And just through that, I kind of picked up on the GarageBand. And it was like, then like when I was like, a, a, 
I think it was like group project or something. And the niggas that was in my group was like making some like weird shit. Like they was trying to make some like weird borderline, like fucking Kid Cudi, Childish Gambino type shit. And I just was not trying to, like I kind of, I guess, moved in like, yo, this is not the type of shit I want to make if I'm going to make a song. <laughs> Right. So I went home and like started working on my own garage band and like made like used some of the little samples on the fucking garage band and made my own little beat and I emailed it to my teacher. And she was like, yo, uh, unfortunately you can't use this beat because it's a group project, but you do have a beat now. So like do whatever you feel with it. <laughs> basically. Nice. And then that was like really kind of what got me rapping basically was like I made a beat and was like, damn, I got a beat. Well, shit, I guess I got to fucking rap over it. And uh, yeah, that was that was like 2009, 2010 for sure. And then uh, like, I don't know, from then on, it was just like me making shit, like just to have fun. And then the more I was listening to shit and getting into the hip hop, it was like the beats got harder to compete with, especially when you're using GarageBand loops. So I, I just started jacking beats, like just I'll listen to classic shit, like Lord Finesse beats or whatever the fuck. I'll be like, oh, shit, I like that. And I go on YouTube and type in like the name of the song, instrumental. And then that was really how like the rap kind of kicked up. Like I, I took a little break. I took a break from beats from, from like maybe 20, like 2011, 2010 maybe all the way to like 20 2018 2019 maybe mm. so yeah it was a little stretch between where i wasn't really making beats like that wow so like in that in that time off like i'm pretty sure you were like just trying to figure out what you wanted to do and and life and stuff like that how did you what got you back into um, making beats and music and, and rapping, man. Uh, shit, I'm buying my, buying my first 404. Well, actually, I, that was not the first 404 I bought. Uh, the first one I bought got stolen. But buying my 404 was really what got me into, like, that's what really kind of put, like, changed my feeling with the fucking, with the music shit, because it was like, uh, fuck, like, like, I don't know, for a while, like, I I was wondering why I couldn't, like, keep focus and shit mm -hmm. with music, because, like, it just would seem so fucking, like, boring to me sometimes. Like, it's like, yo, if I don't feel like making anything, I'm not going to make it. And if I have to open up my computer every time I want to make a song, that shit is just not really appealing to me. So it was just like, Yo, I could think of like a million other things to do before I sit down and like try to work on this song. And then it led to me kind of like not really like making music that much, you know, but it was like, I think I had taken multiple bouts with like coming up to New York and adjusting to that and like just trying to get my life together, basically, you know, like. Yeah, just trying to just trying to do life basically, and then uh, eventually, like I, I think I made a little bread from the job that I had, and I bought like a four hundred four at like a pretty crucial time. And then when I got that shit, it was like it kind of changed the feeling that I had always been familiar with of making music or like making a beat, mm -hmm. and it kind of made it feel like I was like more in control of what it was that I was doing. And then also, like, because of the people that I came up around, like, listening to and, like, doing shows with and all types of shit, it was like my ear was already kind of trained for what the 404 does. I just didn't have one and I had no reference. So it was like once I finally got the 404, it was like all the friends and, like, inspirations I had over the years like kind of just like I would allow them to visit me while I was sitting in my room by myself like oh shit that's how like that's how Obliv do that like oh that's how K's do that that's how like best friend was doing that at that one show or blah 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 so then it was like it was more so like oh shit like now instead of me having to like click a button and a fucking song happens 
it's like the music is now being formed in my head before I even like put it down anywhere. You know, like it's like I, it, it was the first wow. time I actually felt like really kind of in tune with the music. Mm. So then that's when it kind of like switched up and it was like, oh shit, like damn, this is what I need to be doing to like, like, cause I was also in a wild point in my life where it was like, I was trying to take my music more seriously, but then I was also trying to be out like partying with random niggas I don't know and like all types of shit. So it was like, that was like kind of a blessing enough at the time where it was like, it came in at a time where I didn't really like need to isolate myself or nothing. But when I looked up and I was wondering like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Like, why is all this bullshit keep happening? It was like, literally just as easy as like, not nigga, you need to sit in the house and like work on these beats, bro. Like, cause otherwise I'm like, I don't know. I, I try to be, I'm a peaceful dude, you know, but it was like, I just, it don't matter how horrible the people around you are. If you keep going out and choosing to fucking be around them, that's your fault after a while, so. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really kind of that was when I kind of fell back and was like, all right, I'm just doing this. And I had I had like an ex girlfriend I had to get rid of basically because she's trying to distract me. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that. I I used COVID to do that. So that was cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yo, shout, shout out to COVID, yo. <laughs> yeah, shout out to COVID. Uh, COVID really helped me break that damn curse. Like. Mm-hmm. COVID and a, and a good amount of fucking alcohol. <laughs> Yo, so you going through that transition, um, that like kind of like awakening, like because you saw the cycle happening and then you were like, Yo, man, I don't want to deal with this all the time. And then you made the decision to just go ahead and focus more on your craft, on the beats and the, uh, and the rapping and stuff like that. Like, how do you think that impacted um, your life since you made it? Since you've made that decision? Well, honestly, that's probably the best decision I could have made at the time. Because, I mean, honestly, it was better that I sat down and did it then. Because, like, maybe less than a year after I decided that I was going to do that was when, like, the whole world got shut down. So, luckily, by the time when like by the time COVID hit I was already like grandfathered into being like yo I'm gonna just wake up and make beats Mm. so it was like by the time COVID happened it was like oh shit you telling me I got all this time to do it as I please like all right bet uh and then I mean it like it also kind you know it helped me it gave me more of my more control over my situation wherever I am because then it taught me like yo I can sit here and like 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 I don't know like it, it kind of it was a blessing because basically like I, I come from like my granddad who like damn near raised me he fucking uh he was a big like make money on your own square kind of guy Entrepreneur. So like the whole yeah, the whole time growing up, you have like the the mills and like all types of shit that cut metals and different screws for other machines and shit like that. Like the first time I walked in there, he was like, "Oh yeah, this is where I make my money at." Like I thought he meant that shit literally, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that kind of that kind of like brought me back to like square one in a good way where it was like okay i've known i've known this like my whole life so now it's like me turning it into my own version of the machine that or the workshop that my granddad had basically and then that that led to me being able to actually like make money and like feed myself and shit in a time where won't nobody able to really make money and a lot of niggas won't get in like unemployment and you know so it was just like that was like a that was probably the best thing i could have fucking done because by the time covid hit it felt like it was like fucking snow days forever bro like we was in the crib <laughs> straight video games like yo i 
because I've been before COVID, I started working so like I was working so much and I was drinking so much that I literally did not have time to do the shit that I really like doing and all the shit that I had been spending my money on. Like you go to work so you could like get these beat machines, you get these records, you get all these books you get all these dvds the fucking playstation 2 is in the room like whatever the fuck but then it's like you look up he's like damn i don't have time to use none of this shit like i literally go to work go to the bar come back and i play video games for like 15 minutes until i pass out or like i'll try to make a beat for like 10 minutes before i get mad and pass out you know what i'm saying so it, was, it just like it just put me on put me on a better path basically which is, you know, it's probably saved my life a little bit too. Like I was getting, I didn't notice how drunk I was fucking getting all the time. Like I was just like getting beat like right before that point of like blackout drunk, like every time I went out. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, man. It's, yo, I'm glad that, well, for, for you, I'm glad that, you know, um, that awakening happened that that and then COVID happened to even reinforce it even more yeah um, so it's because you know what I mean I might not be talking to you right now you know what I'm saying and yeah uh, nah, that's real that's real yeah man yo so okay I gotta ask man since you mentioned your your granddad um you know I gotta f- find out like which family members or friends like exposed you to music you know like what were what were they listening to uh you know as you were coming up Oh man, yo, that's like, that's always like a crazy fucking like thing, right? Because it's like, I always try to trace it back and like, I have a weird, I have like a weird kind of like level of like ability to fly under the radar in my family. Hmm. So... I don't think nobody really looked at me and was like, hey, kid, this is hip hop or whatever. (laughs) But just naturally through like, I don't know, you know, you grow up like you're a little kid and you 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 start picking. Eventually you start picking shit like when when they tell you because I grew I grew up in a place like in a family where it was like. You know, you do what you told, you eat the food even if you don't like it, and you go to bed even if you're not tired oh, type yeah, shit. I know about that. So yeah. <laughs> it was it was more so like when they when I finally started being able to like think about the shit that I actually liked, that was just what caught my ear. So like I'm in New York now, but like that this New York rap shit is not what I grew up with. Mm-hmm. I grew up more so like fucking Three Six Mafia and fucking like uh, like Lil Louisiana mixtape, like fucking Drought Three, fucking uh, what else, man? I love the Rich Boy album. That's like one of my favorite albums ever. I used to run that shit to into the ground as a kid. But like I had I had a cousin like I basically it, especially while I was skating like I had I just me and I don't know man it was like uh all right so one it would be the video games right because <laughs> mm-hmm. I would play a bunch of video games and not want to go outside so if I would play games like fucking Midnight Club Dub Edition and they got like high tech beats up there. Or I'm playing like Need for Speed, Most Wanted, and they got Who Can't Click up there. Or Mm -hmm. I'm playing fucking like Tony Hawk's Underground, and they got like Mad Lib and Lord Quasimodo up there. And I'm saying like all my music shit, it was like I don't think anybody around me really even had the means or the experience to like know what I like, because I didn't even know what I like. I just knew when I heard it. So I don't think nobody had really the experience to know what I like. But I think by the time it started happening, I had one cousin who really kind of like looked at me doing it and like helped usher me in. And he he's actually, he's up here now 
with uh well, he's not with me but he's up here uh i see him like regularly my cousin marcus uh goes by like gorilla stomp bones whatever he runs like a, a video game shop over in the lef but fucking um he was the first like family member that i ever knew of like because when we were kids he had dropped like an album with his homies from Richmond because he was in uh, Richmond, Virginia for a while. And he had dropped this album with his friends. And my mom used to like, she used to leave me alone with like a CD player, some headphones and like a wild stack of CDs. Mm -hmm. So then that was also around the same time that like, I'm listening to like mix CDs with my favorite, like two diggable planet songs on them. Like Bob Marley CDs, Take Six CDs, like fucking Chef Mommy, fucking all types of random stuff. And then after a while, like he he was really the guy that kind of put me on. It was like, yo, I know that you're making cool stuff right now and people going to want to ride along. But he was like, just remember that not everybody should be able to get into the dojo type shit. Mm -hmm. So a bar right there, yo. Wow. Hold on, wait a minute. Yeah, he was he was just like, yo, he was just like, make sure you know that not everybody should be able to get into the dojo because you got he was like, you got something that you doing that's not what everybody else is doing. And when niggas see that, they're gonna try to sneak into the dojo and they're gonna steal your sauce. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna take your shit. They gonna they gonna bleed. You gonna bleed, and they gonna fucking paint themselves with it. So fucking, mm. just uh, just fucking. You know, he was like, yeah, just just think about what it is that you're doing, and trusting that shit, and just kind of like, you know, like bet on yourself, basically. And, and that was like that was basically something I put like basically I took all the energy that I had towards skating into into the music shit like that even goes in like how i like how i punch in and shit like I, or i don't punch in and shit like I, I just don't punch in for anything ever like it, it seems like not part of it. but yeah and then outside of that like it's it's mad layers to it because it's like a like my cousin is really the one that if i ever had like a person in my family that was like yo like do this or like he gave me uh the the eight track mixer that i use today and shit mm. like uh and then you know i as you grow up you start putting all the things that you learn from everybody together naturally like i started uh you know digging and doing all that shit but recently like one thing i i didn't really like when I went home recently, I got to sitting with my granddad a lot and he was telling me how like passionate he was about being a DJ when he was younger, which I like, I had an idea, but I didn't like, I knew he was the reason that I listened to all like the smooth jazz and the soul music and all this shit. Like every time I listen to that, that shit, I feel like him. So I knew he liked the music but I didn't know how deep, like, how much of a library of, like, fucking knowledge he is when it comes to this, like, digging in the crate shit. So, like, when I was back home, actually, this past year, like, you know how you think, like, you're so fucking original. <laughs> like, I'm like, I think I'm like, oh, yeah, I got all these crates. Like, my granddad don't got no idea, like, fucking... And then it came time I started moving and shit. So I started, like, packing up crates for records and taking them over to my granddad and letting him go through them and he would mark up which one, he would mark which ones he wanted me to like fucking mix out or ones he wanted to hear. But then outside of that, even ones he didn't want to hear, he knew almost a little bit of something about every record that he touched. So wow, I was just like, like, <laughs> and he was like, he's telling me DJ tips and shit, like shit that I already know, but I'm like, yo, oh fuck, like, which like led me to believe like which led me to understand it's like yo this this old man has been like like because when me and my granddad didn't necessarily get along that much growing up like because i was like he wanted me to play sports and shit 
and I stopped playing like baseball and basketball. All that shit. I started skating. He couldn't relate to it at all. So we had this wild relationship for like a couple years where it was like, dude, I don't, I don't know what the fuck you're on, and you don't know what the fuck I'm on. And we both kind of didn't like each other. But when I would talk to my mom about it, she'd be like, yo, you guys are like the same fucking dudes. So I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and so then, like, naturally, when I come back as a fucking adult and I'm, like, trying to make face, like, you know, show face around my family and shit, me and him get to talking. And I think the thing that really clicked was when I brought, like, the first time I brought a record with my shit on it. Like, it wasn't like I brought him any old record because we had traded records and shit for years. But then when I brought him a record... And just like handed it to him and he looked at the cover and was like oh shit what is this i was like oh that's me he's like what i'm like yeah, yeah that's me like this my voice and shit is on that like you, you don't gotta play it or nothing just like fucking hold on to it basically wow. and from then on that was kind of like like the first time he didn't say it but that was the first time i kind of looked at him and he like i could tell like he was like kind of proud of me a little bit you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so then after that that kind of opened the floodgates that's like my fucking man's like like i'm like we you know i could sit there and talk with him and watch a whole fucking day go by whatever and we'll just sit there and talk about like music and like whatever but it was like it just dawned on me i'm like yo that's why this old man was like kind of cranky for like over a decade because he like he was a dj he used to like sing soul music and shit he's like used to being in the crates and any type of music but then all of a sudden he goes out to the military he comes back all these kids are around and he can't even have his turntable out without somebody breaking it so he has packed up all of the shit that he actually cares about, literally and figuratively. Like, he put all his records in the fucking attic or in, like, a military storage over by the fucking the deep freezer. And he got his turntable, but he keep it in the back behind his chair so he can play defense if any of the kids try to fuck with it. But it's like, like, I didn't realize how much I really picked up musically. Like, how much me picking up on small things that he showed me as a kid kind of really echoed throughout like my whole fucking career really because like after a while i stopped like i didn't want the like the boom bap as much as i wanted the like boom 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 like you know the good soul like the good you know that good like Little feeling. cut in the teeth where homie about to tell you some cold shit right quick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when he not saying where he about to talk a little bit. Like that's that's where I get that from. So yeah, it's it's a wild, like, especially now because cause life's been so crazy and shit has changed so much. I've been kind of forced to look back and actually think about how all of this shit has affected me. <laughs> mm. And in many ways, like I I was telling my cousin yesterday, I was like, yo, we we with what we was given, we did a good job of like finding ways to make our situation at least like look or sound better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, wow. yeah, it's a, it's a, like mad, mad inspirations just come from like where you won't even pay attention to it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yo, so, shout out the, what did you say, cousin Marcus, right? Yeah, my cousin Marcus, cousin Bones. Yeah, shout out to Cousin Bones and then your granddad. Um, yo, man, like, ah, man, inspirational story, my guy. Like, so n now, you know, you getting into making your own music, you getting all the wisdom and knowledge from your cousin Marcus and your grandpops, right? So, like, what's, like, when did you know it was time to, like, release your beats and let the, let the internets hear your beats? Uh... It took a little while, I think. No, actually, the first time I felt like it had to happen, it was like, it was kind of like, a, I was like obliged to. Cause like, I, me and like, me and Grey Matter were working on the radioactive spinach shit. And the, the Mutant Academy shit was starting to like bend together a bit more. I think like, they had added a few people to the group and Ben was already down with that. So we was working on a project and then like 
parts of the way through, through like us like making a couple songs like gray matter just got more unavailable and i was like working and shit like you know i was just like yo fuck it like i go through periods in my life where i'm like yo fuck music i'm gonna get this bread and live my life basically and i went through one of those i was working like two or three jobs or some shit made enough bread and i bought me a laptop and my mom gave me an ipad and i was like making all the beats on the ipad then i would like text them to myself to the fucking garage band on the computer and i would just do that and that that first that first probably like showing anybody like my beats was like the first tape i put out with um i put that out with trash supply fucking uh it's called df just df and it was like straight like me rapping over these like weird ass iPad beats I made. <laughs> and that was like the first like bout with me kind of like publicizing the fact that I'm a producer and shit. And then that was like, that was chill. But then it was like, because it was the iPad, I only had so much that I could do within like my knowledge of actual knowing like how to use music equipment and shit. And then I, you know, took a little break for a while again, moved back up to New York. And then my mom gave me another iPad. Cause like she always buys stuff and then she'll either give it to the kids or if I could use it, she'll hook me with it. And then she gave me that iPad. I got to making beats again. And then it was the same shit. I was like, bro, it's only so much I could do with this. But I love making shit on the iPad. But I was like, yo, you know, what would make it better is like the, the 404. So then when I bought the 404, the beat started coming out like more how I pictured beats to sound, you know what I'm saying? Like the beat started coming out like more official, like not like, and I, I did hate the fact that it sounded a little more like relatable to other people's shit, but that was like also kind of like, that was like a professional decision, you know what I'm saying? I still get as weird as I can, you know? Right. But that was like a professional decision. I just had, had to like conform a tad bit. And then when I got it to a point where I was like, nah, this is me right here. I dropped, a, I was like pretty adamant. Like I was like, yo, I'm not dropping no beat tape, but I was just dropping shit on Instagram. And then I had enough shit saved up. I was like, man, fuck it. And I just put out, I put together a tape called uh, Hands Tied. That was like the first like, yo, this is me, a producer. Like, I don't feel like rapping, but so much. <laughs> yeah, that was like a cool feeling. Cause like, yo, I could put out a thing and it's like just a bunch of music. And then like, it could be one or two fucking rap songs in there. And then that's it, like, fuck it. But that was when I really was like, oh shit. All right, well, yo, here's me doing this and then Luckily, it was really like it was pretty well received. Like I, I, I even I even be seeing homies that like that try they like like the like they take the formulas of shit that I put out, and I'll be like, yo, that's that's funny. Like where like cool. Like it's it's cool to see shit rub off on people. Mm -hmm. But I I just I don't really pay attention to it, especially at first, because you know it might be a self esteem thing more so than like. Yo, I don't be like, blah, blah, blah. But I'd be like, yo, I just wouldn't even think of too many people to be like, yo, here's that one thing Deuce did. Let's do that. And they'd be like, all right, cool. So you you inspired them then? Yeah. They say, nice. they say, uh, they say if you if you have uh, other people like trying to do what you do, be, that's basically like the best form of a flattery if you're able right. to inspire other people to do it how you did it. Yeah, that shit is, I mean, that shit is flattering for sure, but after a while, like, dudes have, it's like, it's, it's cool if it's one thing, like, one, of, especially if I talk with you and it's always, like, peace with every fuck, but it'd be, it also gets to a point where dudes will, like, have you compartmentalized to where they won't talk to you or they won't respond to you, but they follow in your shit. And then when they see you drop some shit, they just go automatically to what you did. Rather than like, oh shit, the homie made a cool thing. Like, fuck yeah, go homie. 
Like, I'd be hyped to, like, anytime my, my man's drop heat, like, anytime my friends drop, like, play some shit that's fucking, like, pray, that's, like, that shit gets me so fucking hyped, and I have to tell them. Like, I'd be like, oh, my fucking God, bro. Like, yo, that shit, yo. Like, it's like, it's like skating, bro. If it, like, it don't matter how much I don't fuck with you, but if you do some shit that's fucking crazy, I gotta be like, yo, bro, like, fuck yeah, bro. Like, that's, Kudos to you, dog. Like, like, I'm just like, I'm still that much of a skate rat. I'm still that much of like a little kid about this shit to where it's like, yo, if that shit expires, it's fire, bro. Like, that shit, like, I I can't really, you know, it has gotten a certain level of disrespectful with certain people where it's like, all right, I just can't even really, like, I just can't even, like, (laughs) go in. Like, I can't really subject myself to it that much because I got too much other shit to think about when I hear you. But at the same time, I know this shit is good still. Like that, because that's like, yeah, no, nah, that's I, it's understandable why people fucking like that. You know what I'm saying? I got but, you. you know, it's just like, yeah, it would be it'd be nice if sometimes people like fucking got inspired and then told people who inspired them, you know what I'm saying? People be, that's when it gets weird to me is when people be like so afraid to like have people know that you inspired them. I had this one random fucking dude, like just type dude. I'd be like, bro, you like my shit? Like, word, all right, word, man. You fuck with me? Cool. Like got to talking with the dude, had like a wild, like fucking, like long ass conversation with this dude. Like, yeah, bro, cool ass fucking guy. And then it got to the point where we'd already made like a little beat tape together, like a little small portion of the beat tape together. So I was like, oh yeah, yo, random beat tape, me and this dude. And bro got at me like, oh shit, like I ain't want niggas to know I like that type of shit. And I was like, bro, then why the fuck is you like, what? I was like, yo. Uh... I was like, bro, niggas just be trying to fucking take the sauce and then be like, I don't know, bro. I was like, yo, what the fuck talking about? That's what Cousin Marcus was talking about when he was talking about you can't let everybody yeah. in the dojo. You can't know? let everybody in the dojo, bro. Man. Fucking, you don't fuck around. If he's told me shit, Grant, you got to do a good... You got to do a good balance of, like, fucking you know, secluding yourself and also, like, still making sure you make your rounds. But, like, yeah, I try to, I try to, like, you know, make sure I still get around and try to, like, show my face and shit. Started taking off and feeling knocking niggas out. She only called.
on me cause I'm hard to figure out with this sex She said to God the one that y'all know why I text I just call some blow wrenches to my chest, yes Said blow wrenches <laughs> 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 Just another road trip for the ashtray, ass face and Style mad play, bottom out of shoddy Style is mad gay She call him while I'm probably out the way Thought the guy spot this out the way Lou back, hold the new the whole crew Smash, true back, stab his blow magic Move rap tags, the key still When I speak the preacher feel Digging in this shit like sneaker hill That spike was the best life Hold the rag mic to my next life Wildin' with a time and finite Where you fuck niggas up and ride bikes On some real trite shit with the bitch before I got my real life in Smoking till I feel nil tight In the fight is in the bag Shot racking I told the bitch stop racking Every nigga rag by the titty bag Snatch you got really mad after I'm ripping niggas chains like a master I'm pushing through your block like a bastard Two shoes fast But the cops shot faster This is buck shot first plaster Ask for the blunt front asher Mad here front blunt lacquer Mad mix the liquor with my bad bitch Bags with precision make decisions this is savage, finna get some racks and stop rapping Finna clear the rack and fuck fashion, niggas still trapping Every time I rap I hear that nigga death laughing Bitchin' with the action, I'm waiting for that shit to happen Came a long way, but I'm mashing Bad bitch, make him stop traffic Left. Yeah, my situation got the feds frustrated Justify my wrongs by living flagrant Graduate from the basement, flooded in the maze get submerged, seas go to the burst on my mills, niggas eating no durst. I remember fighting on the bus, them niggas was served since food roll ups. Tax shit for the cold crush. She said the blood was laced with dust. I told that bitch, hold up. What you asking for? Pack to the raw. I got need to fool you. Pull it on the track. Post is in the crack. Single on you. Leave you on your back. 30 in your cap. Deep on you. I'm big as all cool to the two come through. For pop my bunnies on the roof. For my Dominican crew. Dump sass on on the pussy. Cause it needed a boot. I put my foot in it. Damn near lost my shoe. I couldn't put you on my shit. So I'm on with you. Hey, Jack. I only fuck with queens. Alexander McQueen jeans. We giving all the yo dope. The fiends lean 24 ounce. Pull four. That's a good amount. This lifestyle is hectic. I couldn't take a good amount. 40 below. Rock the patch. Sitting on the elbows. You be rope with these shell toes. Ill flows. I got it. I'm not gonna fish your cars, I problems Swims the color of my constant Blood like Alibaba Rip spinal cords, pussy aqua Essential, bitch love to sit at the center Five sisters We the seven, I don't deal with sisters I'm been feeling like the sisters Fuckin' took the bitches, move the rich men Whoa, wait, call sizzle like the skillets Crucified on the pivot, pulp fiction 911, so I'm pissed And D mega like the pistons I'm pissed off if I don't get the bitch in Bad bitch, pussy ain't shit What's like people fucking out of line? It's 40 to the dip. It all be so simple. It all be so simple. Smoking gas out the rental. Having all this shopping on my mental. Magnetic. Air Max V. Hanging out the fist. Bitch, I'm a perfect game. I will miss it. Family will miss it. No, 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 I rock finish, not kidding Bully with the box in it Take you out the picture like a prop finish You can block spinning, out of spinach Non-existent, cold trolls like I'm Doc Rivers You said now that I can gotta sit you back together Non-fiction, on mission On a bomb, I'm living the palm of all of existence Palm sitting like a bomb ticking Boom, bombing through it, put a hollow through ya Hallelujah, Holly Berry doing Karma Sutra Side of Gouda, thoughts all to the floor Future, the product diluted, run up in your spot and looted, ever black foolish. We put fucking food on the table, five cubits, so the pop ruins, set, drop bluish, let's move up, long nose ruger, move to your connect, when I cop a stuff in less than tuna, test suo, let it take you test and send them to Pluto, and that's loopholes, fresh hugo, your aesthetic pseudo, me new in the boot, starting noodle, boom, get your never TV new for a blood in a cup of nouveau, eating boots, Chris, reminiscing on rock. I'm a noodle in the kitchen cooking up like a Marty Buko. Think like a scholar, still probably shoot you.
ain't something we just talk about to the kids. This is a life that we live and it's life that we've been through and a life that we go through. This is everyday life being recorded. And so this ain't like we just trying to act something out, even though we know this is entertainment, this is all television for you, radio programming and programming you and all that shit. But at the same time, this is our life right here. This is our livelihood also. We live this shit. We just want to let y'all know the truth of it. Instead of keep giving you all the illusions that these other niggas put inside your head. You know what I'm saying? Some brothers fuck around. He might know that bullshit. He might just sell down. He might just sell down. Like, yo, the way I see it, man, it's like, yo, if every person you fucking just met is, like, a potential, like, new fucking avenue your fucking life is about to go down for a matter of however many years you choose to associate with this person. Right. You only got, like, like time is literally the only fucking human currency, bro. So, it's like, the more of that you waste with people that are not going towards where you know you trying to go whether it be like fucking kind hearted or fucking you know like really disrespectful that shit just distracts from what it is you trying to do so then like especially that little time period I was telling y'all I was like yo why does this shit keep happening to me it's like I already like I have already wasn't like the one to be around that many people like when i finally like called it quits on being I'm like oh shit like yeah i'm gonna go to this party and like fetch and fetch told me about a function over here and da, 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 da. like i still wasn't really i was only doing that with like a certain amount of people you know what i'm saying like i didn't have that, that many fucking people i was doing that with but when it would happen it would always like end me up in some shit I was like yo why does shit keep happening like oh shit you gotta I was just talking with my mates about that shit yesterday. It was like, yo, yeah, no, you got to kind of get to a point where it's like, yo, you got to set your shit up to where you got somewhere to just go and sit down and fucking, where you got somewhere you could go and sit down and you could just kind of like be you and just do whatever you want to do. And the more you do that, the more you learn about yourself. Like you kind of, you have no choice but to do that. So, it's always it's always like a minor red flag to me when somebody's like always in the mix. <laughs> okay, so I'll be like, yo, this person. If anything, I'll be like, yo, this person has probably seen or heard some weird shit from some really like maybe highly accredited people or maybe just some weirdos. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, yo, like, like I was out with a homie one time, and it's like at the time it was like, yo, shit, social. Actually, I trust you. You had me around some of like the coolest people I know. But then it was like he brought me around this one. She was like, Yeah, we've been hanging out. And I saw what he had been subjecting himself to. I looked at him. I was like, bro, like <laughs> I was like, yo, how have you been doing this, dog? I was like, yo, it's, yeah, it's just like you gotta you gotta know your limits <laughs> mm-hmm. with this whole life, like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I think everybody that mental health shit is important, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Mental you gotta know yourself. The circle, knowing yourself, man. Paying attention to your circle. It's all important stuff, man. Like not uh, exposing yourself too much, like you know, because people will only let you uh, see a certain amount of who they really are unless you like really close, close. You know what I'm saying? So right, it'll take a while because yeah, you'll be like, you'll think you're really cool with somebody, and then you like look up one day and like yo what the fuck dog <laughs> like, yeah. you know I've, I've definitely had that shit happen to me before multiple times so that's just what love do man when you got love in your heart man it just makes you do dumb shit sometimes like you kind of just because it's like yo like oh yeah i got love for this person so i'm gonna go out and do this thing that i normally would never fucking do <laughs> mm, <laughs> like that shit gets you fucking up a routine and shit and like yeah man but i mean that's that's what's man that's, i guess that's you know good with the bad thing yeah right yo so um i gotta ask you um and if you're able to can you name like one song or one beat that as like your greatest beat of all time 
like like it's one b one or two beats that is like just blew your mind when you heard it and when you were like oh my freaking gosh uh, uh, um i know it's a hard one so my, <laughs> i bro i i forget about them after a while so but there's one i'm thinking about I think it's on uh it's on cooking so block you it's called like werewolf spell it's on like the back end of like it plays one beat when it starts and then it eventually changes into the beat that i'm talking about but it's just like a smooth junk but i mean it's like i i can't really i can't even really say man like i i look at them all it's like they all they all got their own life and shit. so they uh some of them I don't like them as much, but it's the reason I made shit. Like, I'm good for, like, deleting shit I just simply do not like. You know what I'm saying? So if it's stuck around, it's there for a reason. So, yeah, I, I can't. Let me see. I don't even got my shit hooked up to a... Uh... Yeah, man, I don't even have my shit hooked up. Oh, yeah, because I just cleared my whole hard drive. But yeah, man. Okay. I got yo. Let me let me think. Um, yo, this one beat I made with DZ Finesse. It's called Breaking Bread with DZ Finesse. That shit might be one of them. Okay. Um, the simple shit, man. Fucking uh, oh, pooch. This is simple shit, like uh. The one shit, I can't remember the name of it. Their Vada rapped over it though. Uh, it's like you're so late getting home. That shit, that might, that was like in a good period when I was like focusing on one machine and I felt like I was learning it very well. Fucking yeah, that beat. Actually though, he didn't rap over the whole thing, so you gotta listen to the whole thing that's actually on the house shoes block two shit. Um, I feel like I got a song named Chupacabras with SD and I like that beat a lot too mm, okay yeah I seen uh, I said well I, I don't want to jump questions because I I seen SD on a few projects of yours where he's um, where he's um, spitting so yeah, yeah we can save that for the next question man yeah we yeah. can save that for yeah, I'm gonna go with detail. So, but yeah, okay, yeah. let me let me ask this, man. You you seem like, um, like you're you're on a path to learning and trying to figure this whole thing out, man. So, just like my listeners, um, they're trying to figure out, you know, you know how to go about creating music or creating art and stuff like that. But what's some of the things that you would recommend like any books um youtube tutorials podcasts like documentaries any movies that you would recommend my listeners check out as they're on their own path something that impacted um, you documentaries that impacted me i right, stop come on check out. i got you calm down calm down Get myself some. <laughs> I'm about to have my dog freaking out. So again, oh, uh, documentaries. I'm watching documentaries all the time. I, I don't know, man. Honestly, it could, it could be a movie. Thing, movies. Uh, I feel like it's more so kind of just like state of mind shit too, because it could be some all, all unrelated, some completely unrelated. You know, I just the way I feel like you just got to get your it don't matter really even what you're using. I've kind of figured at this point. But if you get your mind in gear to where you kind of got like a formula to, you know, turn the machine on and turn it off, you know, to make this stuff that you make, you know, find your style and you know, you could watch as many YouTube tutorials as you want, but you gotta. I didn't. I, I watched so many YouTube tutorials and still couldn't comprehend some of the shit until I actually just sat down and started pressing buttons 
So you, it's kind of just like being okay with being wrong and like just like stepping down from the high horse right quick and kind of just like being a little kid about some shit and fucking yeah I can't like I can't really say one documentary in general but it, which is wild that I feel that way because I'm always like I went through a period where I didn't even watch movies I watched only like documentaries for like a year or two fucking <laughs> but yeah. it's just like it's more so kind of just like you gotta find your thing and just make sure you step off from everybody else every now and then and like do, do that thing trial and error trial and error yeah, put the ego error, aside yeah. it's like jump up stub your toe like five times and then get it on the sixth time you know what I'm saying like that's really it like I feel like that's what people forget is part of all this shit people be like afraid that something's gonna be bad or like they cancel this shit out before they even fucking get to it. And it's like, bro, you haven't even gotten to the bridge yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. Especially with everybody, everybody got. I know. I know. I got anxiety. So I know if everybody else anxiety got anxiety, like fucking everybody freaking out and just not doing shit. They easily quit. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just kind of like more of an application of whatever it is. Like, I'm, I'm shitty. Like, I could read a book. I could read, like, one chapter of a book and then be like, all right, word, I'm going outside to do this. And it's like, bro, I haven't even finished the book. But I just, like, took that one thing and then just went and tried to try it. Oh, one documentary I would still recommend. Uh... There's an on video magazine Love Park documentary. I like that a lot. <laughs> and there's one. Oh, yeah, another one. Second one I would recommend. It's called The Girl from Ipanema. It's like a. It's just a Boston Nova documentary. It's a good one. But yeah, I just got documentary references. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um,. From your from your social media, like you could be seen using like you know the, the SP four four. The I think you got a five hundred five in there, some other analog gear in there as well. Yeah, yeah, that's packed away right now. The five five five. Uh, I got a five thousand too. That's packed away too. Okay, so but, yeah, like, yeah. What, what what why do you use I mean I know you already said it uh, as far as you wanted to just be connected you and the music and how you wanted it to sound um, does each piece of that uh, like the 555 the 5000 the 404 does each piece have their own place when you when you're creating your music uh yeah and I think it also kind of depends like just what physical space I have because, uh, like, I don't know, some of the, like, the 555 and the 5000 are just, like, bigger. You know what I'm saying? Um, granted, I have gotten recently to where, like, the 1000 has really been my, like, go to, like, kind of brain. Like, I feel like I've kind of successfully put my brain inside of the 1000. So that's been my like real uh my workhorse lately. 404 is like uh it's just trusty, you know what I'm saying? I I feel like I kinda I sat down and went crazy with that thing enough times to where like yeah, it's just uh recently it's been like 404, 1000 and I've been I actually added a 303 in just to kind of make shit you know, funky. But are you yeah, are you, yeah. Are you running these through like a a, a doll, or are you just connecting these? Nah, I don't. I don't use dogs very much. Wow. I've been I've been working with lungs, so he been like teaching me a little shit on Pro Tools every now and then. Though. Wow, wow. So you completely like dollless? Yeah. Straight analog. Yeah, everything. 
Yeah, nah, straight analog. I, I got like a, that mixer my cousin Bones gave me is a, it's like an eight track. And basically you could like turn it into slave mode and you, uh, it's just like turn it into a hard drive, so to speak. So you kind of just like, yeah, I don't have to, I don't have to touch a dog. I just like mix my shit out with knobs. And then I like resample a master track and then fucking I'm done. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is that is amazing, man. I, I uh I've seen people uh use dolls, go dollless. Like a lot of my my guests, they use uh analog um equipment as well, but they also incorporate some type like Ableton or um or some type of other doll that they use to kind of put it all together and use the doll as the brains of the operation. But which one of those pieces of gear are the brains of your operation? Uh, that's the. Uh, that one is it's a low key secret. I I put you on though. It's a it's the Korg D eight eight eight. Okay. It's a it's a Korg like eight track mixer it's basically like a studio in a box wow okay all right and it's, it's still maintaining analog you know still maintaining that analog um yeah you know, yeah man yeah, yeah hey man yeah i i mean for you to give a secret out you know what i mean yeah no nah, <laughs> no nah, it's cool it's cool <laughs> you know, but yeah i yeah, can yeah, tell from your, a... i can tell from your music man it's like Yo, like it's a it's a feel, but it's also like the sound. Like I just love like the dusty, like the crunchy, you know, the vinyl cassette feel. Like it's throughout your whole catalog. That's that's that feeling. It's never anything like you know how it be on the radio, super clean, super crisp, you know, stuff like that. Yo, is that that's intentional, correct? Yeah, I mean it's like that's just how it's uh. That's how it all sounds. One is like those, all those machines when you just like wreck their set them up to each other like that. They just, they have like their own natural like crisp to it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you find your formula, you'll have it set up to where like when the shit is all plugged in, even if you just play the record, it don't sound like how the record normally would sound. You know what I'm saying? So you just like you create your formula, you have your steps in which you're gonna manipulate whatever you fucking with. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you you just gotta have this shit around. You gotta kinda ah oh shit, you got a train going by my bad. Ah, uh, you uh, alright, you good. Yeah. Yeah, but you kind of just got to make sure, you know, you always got the, got the easel out. Make sure you always have it to where you can just step to it when you feel like it. Because if you got to keep, like, especially if, I don't know if anybody uses an MPC, but if you use an MPC, you got to take a little time to load the folders up. So, uh, fucking, I just try to have my shit, like, ready, ready to go got you i got you man so um now i gotta ask you this man like you're more than just you know like a a beat making music producer you're a skater right you're i mean a a rapper photographer what to say what else to say on your ig i think you said wheelie border Uh, (laughs) (laughs) you're like a whole bunch of different wheelie (laughs) board (laughs) you hope you're like you're a whole bunch of different things right like are these um personal interests and like which one is which one of those are like your first love you yeah. uh, uh um first love probably is like uh well my mom got me into photography at like a really really young age so like i was like really really small fucking around like in front of and behind cameras and shit um shout out to moms yo yeah yeah so probably maybe photography came like you know earliest but then 
You know, so like, I don't know. I think music and skateboarding kind of hit like around the same time a little bit. Another train. <laughs> so we're right here. Here. But yeah, music definitely, music and skating came at the same time, but for sure photography. Like I was just so small. Got you, yo. Shout, yo, I mean, you've been you've been exposed to a lot of different things um, as a at a young age. So now I, I got to go into um, asking you about your 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 discography like your musical outputs that you've been putting out there man um right now just on one of your profiles on Bandcamp you have 49 projects right but I wanted to shed light on um your 2020 beat tape called uh, the beat strangler uh which is kind of like oh. broken up into like two cassette tapes but yeah then, and then you got the like cooking soul blocked you which <laughs> i thought that was like hilarious <laughs> yo. and then you yeah. got the doofus can't read that's a collection of songs produced by you but it also includes like um essie and wavy bagels and then you and uh then you got racking shit which is entirely produced by yes. iwani uh but featuring like stanley ipkis like can you like how did those, all of those projects come come about man uh so all of the, the way every single like block you project has ever happened is that it was gonna turn into some other project but then somebody that i thought was fucking funny to block me blocks me and i'll be like oh shit nah this is what i'm going with <laughs> and, then, and that's that's what it is like every time it's never like premeditated or nothing It'd be like, it's just be funny because I mean, I mean, like, you know, I'm not always the most professional dude, but I be talking my shit a little bit. It'd be funny, but I don't think I'd be like disrespecting people too much, you know, not, I mean, I mean, sometimes, but like, I don't be disrespectful that much to people on Twitter, you know what I'm saying? So... Like, I think the one I did ask for, like, I, the one I asked for was Lupe Fiasco. Because I saw that he blocked one of my homies. And I was like, yo, please block me. Because <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and he did it. And then I was like, that. <laughs> Got the cover art. <laughs> so, but then, yeah, that's how all of those happened. Fucking, um, the Ewan shit. I've just known Ewan for so long. So anytime me and him work together, it's like mad natural. It's like easy. We don't even gotta be in the same room. But again, um, which which is the other one you said? You said uh, you talking about Doofus can't read. Ah, uh, Doofus can't read. That's, that's your most damn. recent one too. Yeah, man. Yeah, that that's was, amazing. That's that that album is amazing. That was that was kind of my like that was uh, me fucking making a soundtrack to my escape from Virginia, man. Mm. Yet again, you gotta try hard to get out of that, motherfucker. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was just, I had a shit-ass job, and I was just like, I would just like, I found, like, me and Essie, we found, technically, technically, I, I definitely stumbled upon it, but I found this, like, treasure trove of like good records in my neighborhood in Newport News and fucking basically I went in over the course of like a couple months and just bought like all the fire records these people had and uh and I would go around to like different thrift stores and shit and like whatever but I was like randomly it was like kind of just sent from heaven because usually you don't really find that good of records especially where i live in the 75 usually you go like a city over and it's like good records but they're like fucking 30 fucking dollars or something like that 
so fucking I got all these records for a good price and I was just like making tip money at this dumbass job and I would just like buy a bottle of wine and come home and chop up records and I would just like get drunk and make beats until I kind of like uh I would just get drunk and make beats until I made it the beat that I wanted to rap over and then that was like I did that I think it was like I was doing like a song a day for like multiple different periods like one week period I would do like a song a day and then another week period I would do like a song a day and then naturally the shit kind of just like smoothed its way together fucking yeah, yeah, that that one, but that one ended up being a little more after all was said and done, and I finally got out. That one kind of ended up being a little more fundamental than I'd have liked it to have been. <laughs> but it was, yeah, that one is good. Uh, I'm still, I'm still getting to the point where I can listen to that one again. Like, I think I listened to it so much, and I was doing so much to it as I was making it. Cause like once I get like five or four songs, I'll like fucking put them into a playlist and then listen to it over and then I'll like make the song and then I'll add it to the playlist. So then after I release it, I'm like, all right, I'm fucking over this. And I just can't really like process it as well. Yeah, you got a line on that album. You said, uh, Ironically, I'm smoking for my health. <laughs> I say, oh wow, yo. Yeah. Yeah, man. Fucking There's other shit to do that'll fucking <laughs> other shit to do, man. Yeah. So okay. Um <laughs> that's it to my spirit. Alright, that's that's one that's one profile, right? But the other profile that you have on Bandcamp, can you tell everybody what the name of that? Um, profile is where and there's a whole bunch of more projects from you and on that profile. It's, uh, a bunch of younger shit. Uh it's it's one of them like band camp automatically generated names they used to do for you. I don't know if they still do that shit. But it's like <laughs> the Foos Rubo, like D F O O V R U B O E. <laughs> like dot bandcamp.com or some shit and it's basically like just all of my young shit leading up to me kind of like getting set up with like music a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and then being like yo I don't even want to associate none of this new shit with that and I made a new one like kind of buried the hatch on that one it's still there I just don't promote it yeah mm. But it was like, yeah, it was a wild time. I was making like, making like a 16 song mixtape and I released it for $3. Just seriously didn't see why anybody would buy it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, yeah, but like, people, yo. people like me, like I'm interested because, you know, like if I'm interested in, uh, in an artist, like I'll go back to where they started. Cause you gotta yeah, see bro, like I'll the growth. You, yeah, I'll send you the I'll send you the link. Let me get off the phone here. Word, man. Yo, I'm always. My bad. I'm I, sorry. I'm sorry. I told um I I told DiBiase he was on the show a couple weeks ago too, man. I was like, yo, them B tapes that you was trying to sell years ago, if you got some in the attic somewhere, like I'm still, I'll buy them. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause like nah, that's for real. All that shit. Is money now too like cause especially when dudes is doing it when nobody wanted it yeah that shit is like especially the stock on rap shit is like crazy now like you know what I'm saying like that shit I couldn't even imagine like I went over to Europe and I told somebody that I was able to sell somebody a cassette for $25 and they laughed at me like they thought I was bullshit <laughs> like what <laughs> wow wow so, you get I, I, they say um you know they say you know uh beat makers and you know but like artists overseas they get more love and more support than compared to in the states where you, you know you suppose you would think your home country you would support you but it's yeah harder. you would think yeah you would fucking think but nah that's partly why i'm trying to get over there <laughs> i'm trying to be out soonish 
yeah, man. Because, yeah, like, if you do it, man, I know Iwani uh, traveled over there. He did it with, like, Fly it. Fly it. Oh, man, how am saying this? Yeah, name? yeah, I think he was DJing uh, his tour over there. Yeah, man. And, um, that and uh, Brain Orchestra is getting ready to go back over to the UK. He's from Jersey, so, yep. yeah, man, like. Yeah, yeah I got it. I got plans too. I gotta go and I gotta do some medical tourism. <laughs> I gotta go fucking get my teeth fixed in another country because they'll try to fucking run you through the goddamn earth here to get your shit fixed. Yeah, man. So You're fucking yo, um, I gotta ask you this question, man. So, given some thought, uh, can you name like your childhood, um? Uh, beat maker superheroes and then part two to this question is um can you name your like the people that you like look up to right now uh beat maker superheroes and and no genres off limits either so you can name you can go outside the box as well uh uh yeah, give me a second uh thousand ones definitely like Childhood ones was definitely like Mad Lib, fucking uh, yo, fucking honestly enough, fucking Paulo the Don. Uh, okay. You know about Paulo the Don? Yeah, Paulo the Don. Yeah. Yeah, Paulo the Don. Bro. I think he's one of the most astounding beat makers. Bro, he was like, as a kid to me, like that shit, that whole tape had me fucking on one as a kid. Like, people just think that album was, like, throw some bees on that bitch, but that album was, like, like, I got that shit on wax, bro. That shit, <laughs> that shit is, like, a broad stretch. Like, he was not pandering to one group of people on that album. Like, he produced something for, like, everybody on that fucking album. Fucking. <laughs> so, like, as a kid, it was definitely, like, Paulo the Don. <laughs> fucking Mad Lib because I'd heard him in video games and shit and like uh, who else I want to say fucking DJ Paul just out of fucking just out of pure yeah not nah, undoubt you can't as much Three Six Mafia as I listen to bro like bro if you played if they I was like the smallest kid, bro. If they played Three Six Mafia on the way from football practice, they always had me in like the worst seat in there. And it was like, bro, it was like, you can't, people don't sit still when fucking DJ Paul played. <laughs> like, <laughs> so definitely like DJ Paul, fucking Mad Lib and like Paulo the Don. <laughs> Which right. is a wild assortment of people, but like uh now it would be like Mad Lib still Dilla. I mean like when I first started, it was definitely like New Jabez. Cause that was like the first beats that ever really made me want to rap. Mm -hmm. So that was like definitely New Jabez. Um, I mean, now, like, yo, nice, we're all, my bro, Essie, Essie's like, bro, Essie is making some shit, like, bro, Essie's just making some of the most ridiculous sounding beats that I've, like, ever heard, actually, like, <laughs> He, he, people need to get up with him because he's fucking like, bro, that motherfucker. He's one of those people you just leave him do his thing, bro. He, he just get it done and it, it come out his way. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's my fucking brother. He's fucking, right now, he's like low key one of the main beat makers. When I hear something from him, I'm like, God, fuck it. Like, he plays you shit and it's always like screw face shit. Like it's just like, yo, what the fuck? He's wild. You're like, what's his what's his um does he go by like S E the 
the chemist or se just se uh se the chemist se whichever i mean you know se the chemist is probably for people that have been familiar with them for a long time mm. but yeah i mean yeah that's basically the full name yeah but that's actually man that's uh he's around he's still back in virginia but he, he's he's still been chopping shit up like you know what I'm saying, working and shit. Me and him got a project coming out over some August Phenom productions. I'm actually, I just finished a couple projects or I, I just finished a project last night. So now I got to sit down with Essie and finish this other shit. And then, uh, yeah. Looking forward to that. You know, I'm looking forward to so is that gonna come out before the end of 2022 or just the first part of 2023 well, uh, hey man i didn't even think that far ahead <laughs> it is the end of the year right yeah, probably man. gonna be next year yeah i think i might honestly i might uh i might hold everything until next year or i don't know if i get this one thing done this month it might come out in like a couple, couple weeks so because I actually just finished the last song for this project I'm working on with my man's fan ran last night. So, uh, we just need cover art. And I got to do like a couple, like, you know, final touches on the on the songs. But yeah, that that's actually done. Um, it was supposed to be five songs. I think I made six. And then I'm going to add a couple little, like, you know, little doodads and shit. But, uh, yeah, I'm actually about to drop something fairly soon, it seems. I actually didn't even think about that. Mm. So, yo, so I, you, you talked about cover art. Um, so I'm going to ask you, like, I, if you, if when my listeners listen to this, I need y'all to go to Bandcamp, support the homie on Bandcamp. But I've been looking at, uh, I think I have one of your cassettes, man. I got to look at my cassette collection, man. Um, but I think, yo, like your cover art for your, like your projects, um, it, yo, it feels like you got like a brew, a brewery, like you do it yourself or with the homies and it's like a personal touch to it. Is that, is that all you doing your cover art or are you outsourcing like, Cause it looks phenomenal, man. Like, what well, you it do. depends. It depends which one you're talking about, because certain ones I did not do, like the hood rat noir in the swamp funk shit. Mm -hmm. I did not do those. That's the homie Ivan Merlin. I think out of like Oklahoma. Um. Uh. Some of them, like a lot of the beat tapes, I do. If it's a beat tape, I think I I did the cover art for it. Um, racking shit, I did not do that cover art. That was the homie Luca from a uh, Luca Salvaretti from out in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, he he used to be on. Um, He's like a, a legendary SoundCloud homie that like disappeared and then like popped. It was, it was random. I was like, oh shit, you're here. I think it was like Sh Sh Shaman Rogers. If you remember SoundCloud days, the dude named Shaman Rogers. That's that dude that did that cover art. So that was mad, mad fucking cool to have him do that. Um, I'm trying to think. The Radioactive Spinach one and the unkind shit were both done by the homie chopped the head um but yeah for the most part if it was like a oh doofus can't read that was uh i just added a basically a, a throw that the homie luca the same homie that did the cover art for uh racket shit mm. He hooked me up with some letters for like, and I put it over a family like, uh, like a photo. You know what I'm saying, like family photo shit. Yeah, that was fire, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I made a couple different cover arts for that one. 
man like the the hood rat new war um if you ever get any more uh if you ever get any more like uh skateboards like i want one of them man like i i, I missed out on getting it i know you sold out man yo i need that I, yeah i've skated yeah i've skated <laughs> and then fucking uh i got one left it's on my wall right now it's the only one i got left Damn. but i i want to get yeah i want to get more made i i gotta i gotta i'm actually regrouping with my whole you know product and like um all that stuff here because i i just ran out of a bunch of shit but then i just got a bunch of some other shit and i'm trying to if the world doesn't fucking implode in the next year or two i'm trying to make some rounds with some of this shit like probably overseas eventually so i'm about to go through like a mass like regrouping of product especially like once i get like i'm about to just get the hustling and do that shit yeah. but yeah <laughs> i'm working on it I'm working on it get some more boards made if it's not a hood right nor board it's gonna be you know something that makes sense. i got you so um i gotta ask this man like uh like when you um you're out of New York right now, but I wanted to ask you if you were if you were to would have still been back in Virginia. What's the what's the beat scene like um in Virginia, but then also in New York right now? Um I can't think for the entirety of Virginia. Uh Richmond I think is always gonna have like Especially because it's like a college town over there. Richmond is always going to have like a, a group of kids doing it up over there. Plus, it's like uh, the home, the gritty city homies are like stationed out there. So like fucking Fan Ran, who I'm about to drop this next project with, is out there and shit. Richmond is just kind of like a legendary beat city. Um, always, always going to be. Uh, Hampton, Newport News. However, I do not know very many people outside of me and my bro Essie doing the shit. Um, I mean, in the 7-5 as a whole, we got like not Raw is out there still. I think not Raw is still in Norfolk um, and like that type shit. But the 7-5 is a little bit different from Richmond and it's also like it's just a little more like all the neighborhoods in the 7-5 are a little more isolated within each other. And then it's like, I think I honestly might be like a little too old to know exactly what is going on right now too. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Cause like, especially when I was back home, I was like, yo, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be out too much. Like I was more so just trying to be around my family and shit. So, but I mean, there's always something, man. Like, there's always, like, I mean, if you just talking music in general, you got, like, Young Crazy, you got fucking, um, you got, uh, what's the homie name? Uh, Young Money Yawn. Dude, this, uh, he, like, a Pusha T artist, but he, like, he goes fuck. Like, we got, like, our, we got our artists, but I feel like the people that come from, like, Newport News, Hampton area be, like, a little more out of the spotlight type shit, you know? Just kind of, like, dudes just, they get they, they get their shit going and then they just go back and kick with the fam. Gosh, it's, like, kind of inspirational. <laughs> what about, um, what about, I mean, so, is are there any, like, beat makers from Virginia and New York that uh, you, you would say, hey, y'all need to be on the lookout for these, for these artists? Uh, I know SC's one. Yeah, SC one. Um, shit, the homie Jesse Ragson. Um, I mean, most of the people from Virginia you already know about. Like, most like Virginia get get. You know, I mean, New York. I mean, the bro lungs is making making some ill shit. Uh. 
Is that his name, Lungs? Yeah, Lungs. Right, Lone I Sword. I gotta, I gotta yeah. look that up. Yeah, yeah, Lungs. He's he raps and shit, but he's like he's a crazy rapper. But he he also is making he's making smell shit. Me and him are about to start working on some some new shit soon. Actually, after I clear my plate with these projects, and um, I'm trying to think, man. Yo, my bro Juni, out out in L.A. Though he he's out in L.A. He's a uh, he's fucking killing it. He's just wild with the loops and shit, like just, just raw shit. It's just crazy. The bro DMH, raw shit records. Him, he's out in uh, Inland IE, Inland Empire. Fucking um, the lead glitch, the lead glitch making L shit. Man, I think uh, I heard of the lead glitch before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's the younger homie. He's out in Florida. He's a, uh, he's he's a, he's a cool kid. He's just he's a chill dude. He make his make his shit and do him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he's not making beats right now, but like rap homies, Blocks eighty nine. You know what I'm saying? The homie Proze making shit. Se got his own shit. Essie again on a rap tip, like has his own, has his shit come in. Like, he's got so much shit saved up. I'm like, bro, why do you not? Like, I'm like, bro, what are you doing, man? Like, this is, but he's just so particular. He's like, nah. So, but I mean, yeah, man, really the fam. I, but at the same time, I also don't be in the sphere like that. I kind of, I don't, I just listen. I listen to a lot of the same shit over and over again. I got all these records and shit. I, I don't really listen to rap too much. I've been listening to that rock shit. That shit's cool. Um, fucking, I've been listening to fucking Lord Finesse, Return of the Funky Man a lot. And A-Ball and MJG sitting on top of the world. Classics. Yeah, Classics, so my, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been my shit lately. Okay, so, yeah, so as we get ready to round this out, man, um, I got to ask, like, two questions. So, first one is, what's one thing you wish you knew before you started, um, you know, making music and then on your own, like, creative journey? Uh, wish I would have fucking trusted myself more. Like I wish the, I wish I wouldn't have thought I was like tripping. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> and like I find it trust in myself a little bit more. And, and, yeah, like I mean, I'm you know I'm I'm in a good place now. You know what I'm, I'm blessed and I'm thankful for everything I got right now. It's just, you know, this is I'm up right now compared to what the last year or two was. So fucking. Yeah, man, it's just like yo, you could just trust trust in myself a little bit more. That's it. Yeah, yo, that trust yourself. Um, like, cause I know all of my listeners, man, and uh, the people that are gonna listen to this in the future, they would always want to like. That's one question I always wanted to know. Um, is you know the one thing that they wish to do. Some people say business. Some people say trusting yourself. Some people say just executing, learning understand yeah mentoring yeah. it's just like you gotta my if i if i did have like even a, a single word of advice like yo whatever you did to fuck fuck something up you know what i'm saying as long as you gather in new information and moving accordingly like in your present day life then i think you're gonna be good you know what i'm saying so Mm-hmm. Don't just be doing no old bullshit off of some old information. You know, so you gotta, you gotta just, you just gotta grow. That's it. And you just that's all I'm, I'm trying to do at the end of the day. Man. Just trying to grow. That's it. Exactly. That's just cool. That's, 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 all, that's all we do. Can do is expand, man. That's all uh-huh. we be doing. Here, man. 
so okay man yo this has been a dope episode episode number 69 with doof man i always want to say doofus i don't know why it's just a whole hey man <laughs> hey, it's fine bro don't even care i got you but, yo so okay last question man like uh what should the inter- you give us a glimpse already but what should the internet look out for from from doof and the rest of 2022 2023 how can people tap into you um your music go ahead and like put out like any projects you might have coming out plug your socials and then any final thoughts all right um i got i got snake in a rat trap with fan ran gritty city records coming out um probably sooner than later once we get this whole packaging thing done and maybe like a couple you know little little project things done uh i got we don't have a name for it yet we got a project with xv and august for nine that's most parts of the way done um i'm working on another self-produced project called doofus hamilton you know what i'm saying Nice. Oh, that's on your Twitter too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the next self-produced junk. That's pro- probably that's probably gonna be a while. That's not gonna be anytime soon, I don't think. Um, and then we kind of already some of guys started getting started on this shit, but me and Lungs are working on a project after I finish with these other things called scumbags and dress shoes. Nice. And then we we also supposed to sit down with Sadu and make a junk call only go for Goonie links. <laughs> so <laughs> that's gonna be fun. So yeah, we just I'm just trying to get through these these things I was already working on so I can actually sit down and start having some fun with some new shit, man. That's what I'm trying. Bet, man. Yo, so y'all here to hear first, man. Y'all tap into um Doof. Go ahead, like what's how can people get in contact with you and 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 tap into your music, man. Plug your Bandcamp as well. Uh, yeah, Bandcamp is uh, Safe Doofus, S A F Doofus at uh, uh, Safe Doofus dot um, SoundCloud Doof the God with two D's. Uh, um, I'm about to start putting shit back on Spotify. I'm gonna start playing old projects on Spotify and shit. Um, what else? Um, shit, I'm trying to start doing my YouTube thing more. 757 Doofus on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that shit. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not hard, hard to find, man. Hit me up. Yeah, man, yo, y'all heard it here first, man. Doof from Virginia, currently residing in New York, man. Yo, it was an honor having you on the show. I appreciate yo, you, you, man. Yo. Y'all tap in to what this man has going on, yo. Some of some amazing music, man. It's um, yo, like you can put it on, like especially uh your last two projects. Um, let me make sure I get the name right. Doofus Can Read, man. That's um. Man, it's I get a go- I get goosebumps when I listen to it because it just I'm, I guess the emotion you put into it, man, like yo, know, it, it comes through like nice. So yeah, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Dude. Yeah, man. So y'all support. Go ahead, support Doof uh, on social media. Go ahead, support on Bandcamp as well, man. Buy that merch. Support, man. My man trying to do big things. Um, so that's all we can do. That's all we going to do is support artists, beat makers from around the world. Yo, we, they mutants, man. So everybody that's on my podcast, man, is always a mutant. I'm not taking from the the mutant Academy, but yo, y'all, y'all on the red colors, you know, how the X-Men, you know what I mean? Professor Xavier, like, yo, the white people are the humans. Like, yo, that's y'all, man. So shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, Thank man. you for having me, dog. Yeah, it was an honor, man. I appreciate you, man. So, man, love. Be safe, bro. Yeah, everybody. So that was uh, 757 Doofus. 
on episode number 69 of the Rex Show Podcast, man. A podcast for beat makers by beat maker, man. So, yo, man, if you uh, have an amazing uh, beat maker out there, music producer out there, man, send them my way. Send me an email. Um, if you want to get in contact with the show, send an email to the Rec show podcast at gmail.com let me know man um or hit me up on uh twitter and uh or instagram man and uh yeah man i love to connect with artists um think people doing their thing and um yeah man that's what we do here on the show man so make sure y'all count your blessings not your problems take care of your chickens man and i'm gonna see y'all on a special episode of episode 70 man 70 episodes yo yeah man we're about to do this thing man so i appreciate every single one of y'all for tapping in spending a little bit of time with me man and uh go ahead and share this on your socials also um there's a link down below uh if you want to subscribe to my band camp also if you want to just uh, buy me coffee there's a link below as well it says support the show and yeah man we'll be back next week Inshallah, man, on another episode of the Rex Show Podcast, man. Peace and love, yo. Tell like younger kids or other producers like that's cheating. You can't really be set up for bro. Like when it comes to this producing shit, you can do whatever you want. You've been listening to the Rep Show podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Remember three things: believe in your music. Take
take care of your mental. Become the best version of yourself. Until the next one, Golden Mind signing off. Peace and love you. Be the best, you got to work overtime. To be the best, you got to work overtime. These young boys getting better. This is not like the NBA when you can retire. Like this is, you have to keep going.